In today's video, we're going to be talking about the third quarter of the year and what it's done to silver. We're also going to be taking a look at what we might be able to expect coming in the fourth quarter. And I'm also going to be going live in the VIP club tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link in the description. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver. More specifically, how silver reacted to the third quarter of 2021, what some of my expectations are for the fourth quarter of 2021. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Got the brand new Lone Wolf collection out now, as well as the Consistency is Key collection also out now. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today is Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021, also known as my aunt's birthday. Shout out and happy birthday to Aunt DYDSS. The current spot price of silver, as I'm filming the video, is $22.89, up 1.91%, or 43 cents. And the spot price of gold is $17.77.40, up 0.19%, or $3.30. And of course, the gold to silver ratio is in the 77 to 78 to 1 range. But that's as I'm filming the video, not as I'm editing, posting, or as you're watching. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. But today, I wanted to talk about the third quarter of 2021. I'm going to be putting a graph, a chart up on the screen. And I know that this doesn't show the exact precise numbers, but it'll give you a rough idea and I'll be reading off some of the numbers. I just wanted to go through what the third quarter of this year was like for silver. Because it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. I don't really know if you even want to call it a roller coaster. The last three months, it's been on a little bit of a downward trajectory, and I'm here for it. I, I love the red days, and we've seen quite a few red days over the last three months. And as we're coming to an end of the third quarter, I figured it was probably a pretty decent idea to do a little bit of a recap. So starting at the very beginning of July, we can actually see that we were at $26.11 and we were kind of sitting in the $26 range for a little bit of time and then mid-July it was $26.43 and then boom, the next day $25.82, the day after that $25.19 and the day after that $25.07. So we saw a nice little dip right there. It dropped down almost $1.50. You love to see it. Then it kind of stayed in the $25 range for another couple of days. Not a whole lot was going on. And then boom, July 27th, $24.73. Right after that, it kind of climbed back up a little bit, made a little short-term recovery. Sat in the $25 range for another couple of days. And then on August 5th, it was $25.36. The day after that, it was $24.45. The following day, it was $23.30. Nine And once again, it fell down and it kind of stayed low. It was just sitting in the $23 range. Wasn't really doing anything crazy. And that's kind of where it's been for the last couple of weeks, almost the last month. That was August 9th. And moving all the way to September 9th, it was only 24-24. But guess what happened after that? Another couple of days had gone by. It was still fluctuating in the $23 to $24 range. In fact, it went as low as $23.21 and as high as $24.88 during that month, at least according to this chart. And then on September 15th, aka just last week, $23.91. And then boom, the day after that, $22.93. And then boom, once again, the day after that, $22.52. And then boom, once again, the day after that, $22.33. So that's pretty much been the last three months summarized. Once again, 
I'm here for it. The lower, the better. The lower it is, the more of an opportunity it is in my eyes. But we don't have to focus too heavily on what went on the last three months. I also wanted to talk about what we can possibly expect moving forward out of the third quarter and into the fourth quarter because I just posted a video a couple days ago talking about how we just got the inflation reports for the month of August. Well, obviously those are always one month behind. Now we're coming to an end of September. So in October, we're gonna get some inflation numbers for the month of September, this month right here. And a lot of people are speculating that it's not gonna be as bad as anticipated. Now, I don't really know what to make of it because I'm definitely not an economist. I'm not the one who does this for a living. Then again, the ones who do it for a living are wrong most of the time anyway, so what difference does it really make? But we could speculate all we want, but there are a lot of people who have been suggesting, since we're actually seeing prices drop in certain areas, and I'm not talking about the price of silver, I'm not talking about the price of certain stocks, I'm talking about the price of, let's just say, used cars, the price of lodging, the price of air travel. There's so many things that the prices are dropping. There are so many areas where the prices are going up, but there are a lot of places where the prices are going down when that wasn't what we expected. And some people are suggesting that maybe consumer behavior is beginning to change now that summer is pretty much over. Some people are saying that a lot of prices went up because people went and bought everything that they needed and now they have what they need so there's no reason to keep buying it when it comes to phones, when it comes to used cars, when it comes to anything like that. So we could see a little bit of a standstill moving into October, maybe even moving into November, but it's also important to remember that, yeah, sure, okay, summer came to an end. Yeah, sure, people bought what they needed. Okay, yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but guess what else happens in the fourth quarter? Holiday shopping. Toward the end of November, we're going to see Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and that entire weekend we're going to probably see a ton of spending throughout the month of December as well, so that's something else to take into consideration. But there's also something important to take into consideration, especially when it comes to silver. Because when it comes to silver and all of the jobs that it has, I mean, it has over 10,000 different uses in all of these different industries. It's used in batteries, photography, medicine, cars. It's used all over the place. It's the most reflective metal on the planet. It's the greatest conductor of both heat and electricity. But you wanna know what else silver is used in? And this is really, really, really crucial. Computer chips. The reason I bring this up is because right now there is actually a shortage of chips. There's a shortage of computer chips or integrated circuits or semiconductors. There's a shortage right now and Silver is used in these computer chips. They're, it's used in these semiconductors. So if you have a computer, if you have a phone, to be honest, if you have really any techie gadget or, or any type of device like this, it has membranes, it has capacitors, it has computer chips, it has circuit boards. Silver is used in all of these things, but right now with there being a shortage of these chips, it's something that we need to take into consideration. There's a shortage of computer chips only a couple months before everyone's gonna get into reckless spending when it comes to purchasing devices that contain computer chips. Again, I don't wanna do a whole lot of speculating over here, but it's definitely something to take into consideration. So for me personally, I don't agree with or believe in making predictions, but sometimes we can kind of connect the dots and eh, maybe you could argue that we're connecting dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, but I like to take a look at what's going on right here, right now, and I like to see what's going on. I like to take a look at the general state of the economy. I like to take a look at the health and well-being of the dollar bill, aka looking at inflation reports. I like to take a look at the stock market. What's going up? What's going down? I like to see what businesses are thriving right now. What businesses are having a tough time right now? Is it the precious metals that are standing strong? Are they on the rise? Are they on the decline? Is it tech going up? Is it the blue chips going up? I like to take a look at everything, including real estate, including 
really everything when it comes to finance. I'm just fascinated by it. And by doing this, I like to think that I stay multiple steps ahead of the game because I'm not paying attention to just one thing. If I'm paying attention to everything, including what I'm not personally involved in or affiliated with, and I see something moving over there, it could be a little bit of an indicator that something over here might start to be a little bit on the move, whether it be in an upward or a downward direction, and I can kind of capitalize ahead of time. So it's almost like a cheat code just by simply paying attention. You don't have to do anything. You just have to watch. So with everything going on right here, right now, I personally wouldn't be a bit surprised if moving into October, we stay on a little bit of a standstill, maybe even go down a little bit. Not a whole big difference between the two to me. A standstill doesn't mean the exact same spot price across a long period of time. It just means not a whole lot of fluctuating, not a whole lot of volatility. That's kind of what I'm anticipating, and that's obviously subject to change depending on new information that comes out. But for me personally, I don't think going from September into October is going to really do much at all to the spot price of silver. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we continue to decline a little bit. That would actually be quite nice, and I'm actually hoping that that happens. But Regardless, I don't think silver is going to move too far away from where it's currently sitting. Whether it goes a little bit up or a little bit down, I don't think a whole lot of chaos is going to be going on in the precious metal world. We might continue on this very slow decline for a little while. To me, that's a buying opportunity, so it doesn't phase me the slightest. But then moving from October into November, I think that's going to be pretty interesting. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because the inflation reports are always a month behind. We're not going to learn about October until November, and we're not going to learn about November until December. A lot can happen in that very short window of time. So I'm going to take a step back and not worry too much about that. I want to focus a little bit more on the very near future. I want to focus on right here, right now, next week, and next month. That's as far as I'm willing to look at the moment when it comes to my short-term decision-making. What happens or what's going to be going on in the long term, I don't even really have to think about it all too much because everything that I'm doing right here, right now, is for the long term. I fully believe, wholeheartedly believe, that what I'm doing is setting me up for success. When it comes to the silver, or when it comes to the gold, long-term wealth preservation, a hedge against inflation, a store of value, and a way of saving money for the long term. This is my method of saving money. This is not an investment. This is not something that I'm doing to make money. This is not something that I'm doing to generate cash flow. It's not a business. It's not a rental property. It's not a dividend paying stock. This right here, this is just my method of saving money. In my opinion, I think it's arguably the best way of saving money or at least a far better way of saving money than to store everything in dollar bills. So when it comes to the long term, I don't even really have to think about it too much. I don't really have to worry all that much. There's not really anything to worry about as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion and from my perspective. I'm not a financial advisor, so that's not financial advice. This is just my opinion for entertainment purposes. This is just what I'm doing, but I'm curious. Everybody watching this right now, if you can head on down to the comments and let me know, what are you expecting the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months or really the fourth quarter of 2021? What are you expecting? And the reason I wanted to talk about all of this today was just simply to do a little bit of a recap on the third quarter and some of my expectations moving into the fourth quarter. No predictions. I'm just kind of looking at the numbers, trying to crunch the numbers as best as possible, and just evaluate what's going on right here, right now, what is most logical to expect moving forward into the short term, of course, in the short term, I think we're probably going to be on a little bit of a standstill or, or maybe a very slow decline. That's short term, so it's irrelevant for the long term. 
it's very relevant right now because to me that's an opportunity. See, I get comments left and right from people saying, oh, silver dropped a dollar fifty in the last couple of weeks. That's a that's a terrible, horrible thing. I always wonder, how so? How is that a terrible, horrible thing? I get comments from people saying, oh, silver does nothing but go down. How does it go do nothing but go down? When I started, it was 17. The year after that, it was 19. The year after that, it was 22. It went as high as 30 just a couple of months or earlier this year. How is that down? Going from 17 to 30 is down? But that's all short term. That's all over the course of just while I've been stacking. I mean, we could take a look at where silver was at. I don't know. Maybe five, six, seven years ago. I mean, let's take a look right now. In January of 2016, it was 13 and change. Where is it today? 22, 23 and change? How is that down? Silver does go up. It does go down. Overall, I see an upward trajectory as the dollar bill loses purchasing power. The point being is, how is it going down? That's all I have to worry about. How is silver going down? And guess what? If it does go down, what is it going down in? It's going down in dollar bills. we got to get rid of that fiat mentality. But I just wanted to point this out. I wanted to showcase what had been going on over the last roughly 90 days as we're coming to an end of the third quarter. I'm very curious, everybody watching this video right now, what are your thoughts? What are your expectations? And please, why are they your expectations? Because that's another thing. I get comments from people saying, oh, it's, it's going to go to $16.42. And I'll ask them, when is that going to happen? And why is that going to happen? And not one person in my almost four years of stacking has been able to answer that question. So is there any reason behind your expectation? Are you looking at inflation reports? Are you looking at consumer spending behavior? Are you taking a look at where silver is used and how there's a shortage of semiconductors and computer chips? Are you taking a look at how much silver is being mined, how much silver is being minted, how much silver is being stacked? Are you looking at these things or are you just kind of like listing off random numbers? If you're listing off random numbers, I can respect that. That's perfectly okay. Remember to get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble with my referral link and making a deposit of any amount and then refer three friends to get a free share of Apple. Link in the description. But head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic and your thoughts on what we might be able to expect moving into the fourth quarter for the precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the precious metals VIP club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. We're gonna be going live tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm posting exclusive VIP only adventure vlogs. I also do giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Bunch of brand new videos over there. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 3,000 subscribers. We just hit 2,000, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products. T-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin, 
which by the way is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations. And of course the brand new DYDSS Lone Wolf t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, coffee mug, and long sleeve tee available in four different colors and a portion of the proceeds are going towards the International Wolf Center. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance, it's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again, what are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? When it comes to the spot price of silver, moving in a downward direction overall for the last three months for the third quarter of 2021, is that a good sign or a bad sign to you? Are you phased? Are you affected by short-term fluctuations? Are you bothered by dips and corrections in the market? And then moving into the fourth quarter, what are your honest expectations based on pretty much everything that we know that's going on right now? World news is kind of crazy right now. U.S. news is also kind of crazy right now. The economy is obviously crazy right now. What are your honest expectations? Do you think we're going to be on a little bit of a standstill? Maybe continue on this slow decline into the next month, into maybe the next two months. You think the price is going to start going up come late November, early December? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.